About a week or so ago, Luke Smith did a video on window swallowing within DWM, and in that video, he basically said that he didn't know of another window manager that supported this feature. And before that video came out, that was pretty much the case. There weren't really any that I know of that supported it, and it wasn't because that no other window managers could support it, it's because no one had actually bothered to do so. But it turns out that a lot of window managers, BSPWM being one in particular, have really, really powerful scripting interfaces, and there's really no reason why you couldn't implement this feature. And because Luke used to use BSPWM, whenever he says anything positive about DWM and about how it can do something that other window managers can't, the BSPWM guys get really annoyed by this, and they go and try to one-up him. So now there is about five or six different implementations of window swallowing for BSPWM, and we're going to have a look at one of them today. Now, if you haven't seen Luke's video, or you've never used DWM before, you might not even know what window swallowing is, because I don't think outside of a DWM context, it's actually been given a proper name. So window swallowing worked perfectly fine, but if you try to find any information about window swallowing, it'll just always keep bringing you back to DWM, because I'm pretty sure that window manager is the one that has popularized it. So anyway, let's say we wanted to do something like open up an image. So let's just open it up in SXIV and let's open up this one right here. So as we can see, we've got our GUI window off to the right and then we've got this terminal window sitting here not really doing much. So this window here is tied to this window and this window is tied to this window. Now what I mean by this is we can't actually write any commands in here and have them do anything until this window closes here. And if we close this window here, it'll actually close the GUI window as well. So if I just quit out of this, as you'll see, we lost both of the windows rather than just losing the terminal. And if we do that just again, so go back in here, go open that up. If we start typing in commands in here, what you'll notice is as soon as I quit out of this, it'll actually run these commands. So if we just open that back open again, what you could do with this terminal is you could just put it on like a second desktop and I guess that's fine, now you have a bit of a bigger view of the window here, but now when you quit out of your image viewer, you have to go to your new desktop, and it's just not really a, a neat way to work with the application. And this happens with other applications as well. So let's say we opened up a PDF. So if I open up this PDF here, as you'll see, we've got this completely useless terminal window off to the left here, and then we've got our GUI window off to the right. Now, as with the example we saw before, if I was to kill this terminal here, we'll also lose the PDF window as well. Now, what window swallowing is going to do is make it so when you open up, say, SXIV, or we open up a PDF reader, instead of leaving that terminal window there, what it's going to do is automatically hide it. Now, it doesn't just hide it, but I think I'll leave that to when you actually see what it does. So let's just restart my window manager, and let's go back into my pictures directory and open an image up in SXIV. Now, as you can see, as I said, it's replaced the terminal window with the SXIV window, so I can open up a new terminal here, and this terminal will be just a regular old terminal. But let's say we want to get the terminal back that was hidden by the SXIV window. Well, all we have to do now is just quit out of this application, and the terminal is now back. And it's not just the case with something like SXIV. So let's just open that back up, and open up another one over here. Let's go open up another PDF. So let's say we open up this one right here, and as you can see, my terminal window has now been replaced by my PDF, or I can open up something in Newsboat. So this can even be done with a web browser, for example. Let's say we just open up, I don't know, this one here. Now my terminal window has been replaced by my web browser. I think this is actually really cool functionality, and I'm so happy that I can now do it in BSPWM. And then if I was to actually quit out of these applications, what you'll notice is it actually takes us back to the terminal that we just had open. So it's not like it's making a new terminal for us, it's actually restoring the one that we just had open. So this has brought us back into LF, and this one right here will take us back into Newsboat. Okay, so let's actually have a look at how this is being done. Now I've got two versions open here, so this one right here is by one of my subscribers, and I would absolutely love to be using your version. However, I couldn't work out how to actually get it to work. So if you want to let me know, then leave me a comment down below or send me another email about it, but I'm not using your version. I would love to be using it, but as I said, I, I can't work out how to get it to work, and you've got no documentation yet. So until that happens, I'm going to be using a different version. So I'm going to be using this one right here by a guy called Jopstro, and this one is called BSP Swallow. The link to that will be down below. So this script actually comes in two different versions. So we've got the version where you have to basically list out every single window that you want to be swallowed. So 
if you want to have MPV be swallowed, and you want to have SXIV be swallowed, and you want to have Zathura be swallowed, and you want it to be swallowable by Alacriti and by URXVT, but not by Kitty, then this is the version that you'd want to use. But I find this version to be incredibly difficult to maintain for me, and that is because I want every single window to be swallowed except for basically one. So for me, it's much easier to use the second version. And in the second version, you basically maintain a no-swallow list. So in that version, every single window will be swallowed except for the ones that you say not to swallow. And in case this is something you actually care about, the script is actually very, very short. It's only 39 lines. And it's 39 lines that could very easily be compressed. So as we see, we have some spacing in here and some comments. We have multi-line if statements. If you really care about the line count, you could probably easily get it down to 30 lines, but line count doesn't actually matter. And also, as you can see, it's just written in shell script. So it's not Python or Rust or Go or any other language that doesn't really need to be. It's just a very basic shell script. So let's actually get it set up. Now, as you can see, it has one dependency that they're not actually listing anywhere. It has a dependency on xprop. So go and install that. It's just in the xorg xprop package. And that's pretty much the only dependency you need. Obviously, you need to also be on BSPWM, but that should be kind of assumed at this point. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually come in here and then copy the link to the git repo and then go into your terminal and just git clone it. So git clone and then the link to that. Give it a second to download. And then you're going to have to decide on which version that you're going to use. So they're both actually just called BSP Swallow. So unless you're going to rename them yourself, then you're going to have to just pick one or the other. Obviously, you could just keep them both and rename them, call this one BSP Swallow Alt and this one, I don't know, just BSP Swallow. But I'm going to use the BSP Swallow alternative. Now, as you can see, LF actually highlights things that are executable. So the first thing you're actually going to want to do is actually chmod this. So if I just cd into that directory and then go into the alternative one and then just go chmod, plus X on the BSP swallow. Now, all I'd have to do from here is just copy it into wherever I keep my scripts. So for me, that'll be in my scripts directory. And I've already got a copy in here, so I'm just not gonna bother doing that. But for you, just copy it into wherever you keep your scripts or wherever you keep your executable files, and then you'll be able to run it just fine. And because I'm using the alternative version, if I don't care about any windows not being swallowed, all I have to do is take this line right here and then just stick it within my BSPWM config. And as you can see, I've got that line right here. So right here, I've got that. But you might also want to do some configuration. And the way you configure this is actually dead simple. So if you're using the main version, there's two files you're going to care about, the swallow file and the terminals file. Now, the swallow file is basically a list of window classes that you want to be swallowed by a terminal. And then the terminals file is a list of classes of terminals that you want to be swallowed. And if you're using the alternative version, then instead of those files, you're going to care about a file that is just called no swallow. And all of these files just get placed in your .config slash bspwm. So I'll just show you that right now, as you can see right here. So I've got a no swallow file, I've got a swallow file, and a terminals file. You might think my no swallow file is actually empty. It turns out it's actually not. There is one thing in it, so it's just a single blank line. And there's a reason why there's a single blank line in here. So XEV doesn't actually have a window class name. So I'll just delete this file and show you what I mean. So let's just delete this one right here and run XEV. So what you'll see is the entire window gets taken up by that. And if I run Xprop on this, what you'll notice is there's one thing missing that isn't missing on other windows. So if I just run that again on Brave, as you can see right here. So Brave has the window manager class Brave-Browser run that again on XEV, and there's no window manager class over here. It does have a window manager name, so I might modify the script to use the window manager name instead of the class, because some windows, it seems, don't actually have a class name. So that blank line in there is basically going to match on any windows that don't have a window manager class name. And because XEV is the only program that I've run across that actually has this problem, it's sort of just a hack to get XEV to work, but it would be a much better idea to switch over to using the window manager name. So let's just re-add that file in and see what that's going to do. So no swallow. And what we have to do is not just have a single blank line in here, because if it's a single blank line, I've noticed that it tends to just ignore the file. But if we have two blank lines instead, and we save this and quit out of this, and restart my window manager, 
as you can see, now XCV is actually not being swallowed and other windows still will be swallowed. So if I was to open up, say, a PDF, the PDF is still being swallowed fine, but XEV is being ignored. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you might notice something is a little bit off when I go full screen. And that's because this script actually has a bit of conflict with my clean full screen script. So the clean full screen script would basically make it so all of these windows that are behind my current window would be hidden so that I could just see my wallpaper through my transparent terminal. But because of the way this works, I can't actually do that because what it's actually doing in this script is it's using the hidden state to hide the terminal. And also my other script is using the hidden state as well. So if I try to unhide stuff, it's going to unhide stuff, including the terminal that's hidden by this window. So I need to have a look into a way to make those play nicely together because I really, really like this window swallowing and I don't want to lose my clean background. So I know there's an obvious way I could do it. I could just keep track of the windows that are being hidden by that script. It's just a little bit of a pain to get it to work and I haven't really bothered to look into it just yet. Now to answer Luke's question again, yes, other window managers are actually capable of doing window swallowing. It's just that no one had really bothered to implement the feature just yet because, I don't know, maybe they didn't think it was that useful. Personally though, I think it is a really, really awesome feature and I think I will give up on the, uh, the clean full screen for a bit just so I can have this really awesome feature because now that I've been using it for a couple of hours, honestly, I can't go back to not having this because it is so nice to not have this pointless terminal window here that's just wasting space. There's so much extra space I have now that I just didn't know that I needed. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Montazar, Peter D, Rogue, Tony Donald, Kilari, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube, and the audio version, which is available anywhere you listen to audio podcasts. Also remember to go check out this channel, also available on Library, BitTube, and BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and... I'm out.